Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, in my haste yesterday to contribute to the previous motion, I omitted in my expressions of condolences the family of nationally acclaimed engineer and cricket administrator Oliver Scott Jr. I would have encountered Mr. Scott, Mr. Speaker, when I first gained selection on the national under-19 team and also the Winwood Islands under-19 cricket team. During those days, Mr. Scott was at the helm of cricket administration in our country. And Mr. Speaker, as fate would have it, he and I would reunite in a national cause, but this time away from the cricket field and it was in championing the way forward for the St. Lucia Labour Party. And today I just want to put, put on the record um, my expressions of condolences to his family. I also want to profit the opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to express condolences to the family of Mr. Wilkie Latcher, who succumbed to illness yesterday. A lot has been written about him on social media. And although my interactions with him were not many, but what I can say, Mr. Speaker, is that he was a wonderful gentleman who served the country and community with a passion that was fueled by his love for people. Mr. Speaker, we are here today to debate a motion where the government is guaranteeing a loan for the St. Lucia Air and Seaports Authority, otherwise known as SLASPA. SLASPA, as we know it, Mr. Speaker, is about to borrow, or is in the process of borrowing, a little under a quarter billion dollars for the Hiranura International Airport Redevelopment Project. And as such, a syndicate of banks, or a consortium of banks, five of them to be exact, are being approached to make the 200 or $202 million available to SLASPA, and the amounts are as followed. The Bank of St. Lucia Limited, Mr. Speaker, an amount of $58.9 million has been sought from that particular financial entity. First National Bank of St. Lucia, $54.5 million. The Grenada Cooperative Bank Limited for $40.1 million. The Antigua Commercial Bank Limited, $24.5 million, and the Eastern Caribbean Amalgamated Bank, $24.5 million. Mr. Speaker, I have risen in total condemnation of this motion. I despise it. I detest it. I am against it. And it is with much abhorrence I emphatically denounce this move at this time to borrow $202 million for airport redevelopment, almost a quarter billion dollars, at a time when we are faced with unprecedented levels of uncertainty. The fragility of our economy and the Caribbean as a region, Mr. Speaker, is being underscored every day by experts not just from within the Caribbean, but outside and in the international community. And I think it was a member for Sufre this morning who said, Mr. Speaker, when examined closely, the situation is even more acute for small island developing states like St. Lucia. And Mr. Speaker, it is against that backdrop that I have serious difficulty lending support to this motion in its current form. And the leader of the opposition before we made the point. Yes, we all at previous sittings have agreed that the airport in Viewport needs redevelopment. There is no question about that. The Hironoa International Airport, Mr. Speaker, in its current form, does not meet the needs of this country as an airport is supposed to. But Mr. Speaker, a lot has been said about this airport in this parliament and elsewhere. And very, very few, if any other project, 
has had such a long gestation period. At least three administrations have attempted to resolve the problem of an airport that is inadequate. And Mr. Speaker, it has been the subject of much controversy. And like, if I should resort to aviation jargon, like my colleague from Labry, Mr. Speaker, like a malfunctioning aircraft, it has failed to take off after numerous attempts. Nobody comes to your country because you have a nice airport. Nobody comes to your country because they've compared your airport with that of another destination. And because your airport is superior in terms of design and capacity, that is the, the, the factor that will determine whether you are chosen as a destination over another, Mr. Speaker. But the airport is necessary, as I said. And I agree, Mr. Speaker, it should not be out of character with what we present as a tourism destination. And Mr. Speaker, it should reflect what we offer. We all have agreed, as I said, Mr. Speaker, that what passes for an airport in 2020 in this country is inadequate. And so there is need, once again, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to be heard in silence, please. We all have agreed, Mr. Speaker, that the airport needs redevelopment. But today we are saying, Mr. Speaker, that not on the scale that this administration is pursuing the project. I cannot cross the bad little, Mr. Speaker, in this COVID period and take my rightful place in the parliament of this country and lend support to this particular motion in its current form. This needs to be revisited, Mr. Speaker. The quantum of money being quoted here is too much at a time when we are being told, Mr. Speaker, that the country is broke. COVID has forced countries all over the world to reprioritize and re-examine how they approach their development agenda. And Mr. Speaker, you would have thought that after the admission has been made by the Prime Minister himself that the country is broke. And the member from Sufre this morning alluded to the fact that the the, the revenue streams have not been performing as they're supposed to, that the government in its wisdom, Mr. Speaker, would have said, yes, we are going to proceed with the airport, but we need to scale down. I have a serious discomfort, Mr. Speaker, with the financing modality. The St. Lucia Labour Party administration, of which I was part between 2011 and 2016, proposed a PPP arrangement, a public-private partnership, Mr. Speaker, and I believe that was more beneficial to St. Lucia as a financing modality than to guarantee a loan of almost a quarter billion dollars for SLASPA for airport redevelopment. Our current circumstances, Mr. Speaker, cannot give justification to the quantum that is being invested in the airport at this particular point in time. Mr. Speaker, all over the world today, the PPP modality is the preferred approach to airport financing, whether it is to construct new airports or to run airports that have already been constructed. You heard the leader of the opposition citing the example in the UK, Heathrow, one of the busiest airports in the world. The UK government is literally moving away from responsibility for the day-to-day -day running of the Heathrow airport. Right next door in Barbados, the Grantley Adams International Airport, the government of Barbados, they are at a very advanced stage if they have not already completed a transaction with a private entity to run Grantley Adams. But at the time, Mr. Speaker, when everybody is resorting to the PPP arrangement as the preferred modality, the government of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, continues to entertain thoughts of taking a loan of almost a quarter billion dollars for airport redevelopment. Mr. Speaker, I cannot lend support to this particular motion and this particular project as conceived by the government of the day. There are several benefits that can be derived from the PVP arrangement. Higher operating profit margins. That is one of the, the, the benefits that you get when you enter a PVP arrangement. And Mr. Speaker, you are going, Mr. Speaker, 
to see increased operational efficiency when you resort to a PPP as opposed to government taking the responsibility to finance and to run the airport on their own. Mr. Speaker, the quantum needs to be reevaluated. The project needs to be re-examined. Yes, we need the airport. I can only say we all. My pastor Vini is here and I can see Jordi, Mr. Speaker. Et puis, vous représentez Jean Denry Nord qui veut moi pour parler. Et puis, dit ces bagages-là, que vous avez fait, que le gouvernement a fait le pays. Et pour moi, tout le monde ici, et puis, supporter le gouvernement qui a pris en loan, en presque un cas, billion de dollars, M. le Speaker, pour un géant airport. Oui, nous, on est face à ça, là, nous, j'ai l'accord, que l'airport a bougé, tant que tu as fait. Et puis, quand il n'y a pas qu'à qu sauver cette liste, quand il s'y pose. Et nous d'accord, oui, c'est pour nous faire travailler à l'airport là. Mais nous avons dit, Mr. Speaker, que nous ne pouvons pas supporter la quantité d'argent qui a tapé et dépensé à l'aéroport de Salah actuellement. Alors, que le gouvernement, même quand il nous a pas l'argent pour faire un pile de bagaille. Alors, que le gouvernement, même quand il nous a pas l'argent pour faire un pile de bagaille. Mais aujourd'hui, nous avons dépensé plus de 200 millions de dollars pour manger un airport. Mais quand il nous a fait travailler à l'aéroport là, et puis l'argent qui est moins qui a um, quantité à gouvernement qui a proposé pour le moment. Et what about this loan in relation to our debt profile, Mr. Speaker? What about this loan in terms of uh, uh, it being a contingent liability? How does it impact our capacity to borrow moving down the road, Mr. Speaker? They, these are very uncertain times for St. Lucia and the rest of the Caribbean. Today, you might be in a particular situation, Mr. Speaker, where you believe you have the latitude, you have the capabilities, you have the resources, human and otherwise, to get things done in your country. And because you occupy the seat of government today, Mr. Speaker, it does not mean that you will always have the capacity when situations come knocking at our door. It is not just the government and their supporters who will have to bear the burden, Mr. Speaker. The situation is a very delicate one. And it calls for all St. Lucians, Mr. Speaker, irrespective of your political persuasion, to pay attention to what is happening in this country. We did not see COVID coming, Mr. Speaker. And because of the smallness of our country, we may not always be in a position to respond or be able to deal with the shocks that come our way as a result of what happens on the global stage. And that is why we have to proceed with caution. But Mr. Speaker, you would have heard that when we come here and we present an alternative view, this is justification for us to be called names, for all kinds of unsavory labels to be ascribed to us. Mr. Speaker, the government needs to re-examine its priorities where this is concerned. Sometimes as a government, even as, as in our own personal lives, there are certain ambitions that we have. There are certain things that we want to achieve. But, Mr. Speaker, situations unfold, unforeseen as they may be, and it forces us to make adjustments in the plans that we would have initially conceived. This is one instance where I believe the government needs to rethink moving forward as it relates to this particular um, um, project. The economic outlook for St. Lucia, notwithstanding everything we've been told so, um, in this parliament, Mr. Speaker, may not be as bright as some want to make us believe. And nobody wants, Mr. Mr. Speaker, a situation of doom and gloom for our country. When St. Lucia thrives and St. Lucia does well, the people of Denry North stand to benefit. When St. Lucia prospers, the supporters of the St. Lucia Labour Party stand to benefit. And we on this side, by way of providing an alternative viewpoint, should not be seen as prophets of doom and gloom. But there is need to sound a caution. Because, Mr. Speaker, we are in no position to dictate what is happening on the international stage. We can only react. And sometimes, as is the case right now with COVID, we will not necessarily have the capacity to react in ways that can bring relief to our people at the rate that we want. So I want to caution, Mr. Speaker. I want to sound a caution. At the risk of being called a prophet of gloom and doom, 
I want to caution at the risk of being called names. I want to caution, Mr. Speaker, at the risk of being called lazy as a collective opposition, Mr. Speaker. But I believe I have a duty and a responsibility. When I went to the polls, as I've done on two occasions, it was to give expression to the concerns of the people of St. Lucia, in particular the people of Denry North. And Mr. Speaker, when I believe that there is need to sound a caution uh, in relation to a particular government initiative, I will never, Mr. Speaker, allow the opportunity to pass by and not see what I believe would be in the best interest of this country. Mr. Speaker, I would have been happy today to stand here and support guarantees for loans taken by this government, but not to the tune of almost a quarter billion dollars in the immediate aftermath of COVID. And I'm not even sure that we are in the aftermath. The situation is still very fluid. Things are unfolding. New challenging challenges are emerging. And this morning you heard the Prime Minister calling on the opposition, calling on all St. Lucians to play their part. And by standing here today and saying to the government, and by extension the people of St. Lucia, that this is ill-advised that this time I am playing my part, Mr. Speaker. And there must always be opportunities and room for ideas to contest, as I've said before, and for us to present our points of view. I would have supported a guarantee of a loan today for the refurbishment and subsequent reinstatement of the La Rousseau Health Center in Denry North, Mr. Speaker. I would have supported that because when that particular facility was gutted by fire, Mr. Speaker, some years ago, I know what that could have done and the impact it would have had on the people of my constituency. And yes, Mr. Speaker, when fire gutted the facility, it was during the reign of the St. Lucia Labour Party administration on the eve of elections 2016. But we placed in the budget, it was a grand amount, Mr. Speaker, from the Republic of China, Taiwan. Money was there, available. For the, re for the refurbishment and reinstatement of that facility, but it did not happen. And today, Mr. Speaker, particularly on a Tuesday, when you drive through constituency on the main clinic day, considering the Richmond Health Centre is out of commission, you should see people under the bus shelter taking cover from the elements. And I'm supposed to come here and say that $202 million for an airport ought to be priority. And as I've said consistently, I'm not against airport redevelopment. I think it's necessary. But we need to review the quantum, the amount that we are putting forward for this particular project. I would have been happy today, Mr. Speaker, in this post-luncheon period of the Parliament, to support a guarantee of a loan for any statutory corporation that can source laptops and other smart devices for the children of St. Lucia. And this morning I learned for the first time that the NTRC has been engaged in that respect. When we first initiated the laptop program, we started with food from students, Mr. Speaker. But Mr. Speaker, the situation that is before us, nobody saw it coming. Nobody knew prior to January, or even March for that matter, that our school children would have been at their homes and instruction was going to be delivered to them in a virtual setting. We did not know that, and that is not the government's fault. That is nobody's fault. But I'm saying today, in light of this reality that is confronting us, Mr. Speaker, I would have had absolutely no reservation to stand in this honorable house and give support to a guarantee of a loan to any statutory entity, whether it's NTRC or any other, to get monies to procure smart devices and laptop computers for the children of St. Lucia. I would have been equally happy to stand here in this parliament I would have voted with the government on a motion to guarantee a loan for the various banana companies to keep such a vital industry going, Mr. Speaker, at a time when the industry is nearing collapse. I would have supported a guarantee of any amount to salvage the fish marketing cooperation because I see every day what fishers have to go through when they leave their homes, Mr. Speaker, at 5 in the morning, 4 in the morning, to go on the high seas, come back to shore at 6, 7 o'clock in the evening, and then they have to take that fish 
put it at the, on the back of a pickup, and they're driving, traversing every little rural community, trying to get a sale, Mr. Speaker. And when they can't get to sell, they virtually give it away for absolutely nothing. I would have supported a guarantee today for the reopening of Radio St. Lucia. Because I understand, Mr. Speaker, that when governments spend money, and that, that is the, the, the dilemma that a lot of administrations find themselves in, it cannot always be spending, Mr. Speaker, when you are going to get direct returns on the investment that you make. And that is why sometimes some governments are a bit apprehensive to spend on social programs. But Radio St. Lucia, Radio St. Lucia was a very important entity. It mattered to the average St. Lucian. It was a symbol of prestige. And it is something, Mr. Speaker, that we, 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 we cherished very much, Mr. Speaker. So when today, Mr. Speaker, I am being asked to come here and lend support to a guarantee of a loan of $202 million, first last, but Mr. Speaker, I have great difficulty doing that. The people of Denry North would have been disappointed in me to stand here and support that guarantee, Mr. Speaker. And so, Mr. Speaker, I believe that this money could have been put to better use. I believe, as I said earlier on, that the quantum needs to be re-examined and the project needs to be reviewed. Yes, we need an airport. Yes, the airport that we have does not meet the load capacity in terms of visitors coming to our country. But Mr. Speaker, times have changed. Times have changed. And so must our plans moving forward. I understand the need to move ahead with construction projects because the government believes that this is where they're going to get the, the, to get the economy going again, Mr. Speaker. But I cannot, Mr. Speaker, in good con conscience, stand in this honorable house and support this loan guarantee. And so, Mr. Speaker, I want to place on the record that I do not support this particular motion in its current state, and I am calling on the government to consider an alternative view to re-examine this, Mr. Speaker, and consider spending that quantum in other areas that are more in need and more pressing to the people of St. Lucia. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.